Joining me now to discuss is former FBI agent, congressman, and Newsmax contributor Michael Grimm. Michael, law enforcement in Uvalde is struggling to defend the actions made by police on choosing to wait to enter. Of course, we've just heard some news there from Jason Jones saying that they that may not have been the case. Uh, what are you hearing from the latest on the ground there in Uvalde? Well, good afternoon, Mike. And I would say let's not rush the judgment because the situation on the ground once you're inside, from what I just heard from that report, and it's the same reports that I'm getting on, on the ground, is that the police were in within two minutes of the gunman. That is a very good response time by any standard, period. Now, full stop. Once they are inside, we don't know if they assumed that he was barricaded in a classroom with children. You can't just rush in if you believe there were children in there that could be caught in crossfires. So we have to wait and hear the facts on this. But I think this is only a very, very small part. Yes, our police can always be trained to the best of their abilities. But let's take a step back. Why do these shootings keep happening? You know, all the liberals want to talk about gun control. That is a red herring. And, and it, it's just ridiculous to think that more gun control, because the reality is the vast majority of shootings throughout our country are in big cities where there's massive gun control. The, the, you know, if it's Chicago, New York, we have shootings every weekend, and yet we have more gun control than we need in those, in, in those cities. The truth is the gun laws aren't, they're not enforced, number one. Many times it's illegal guns on the street, so I don't want to go down the run of, road of gun control. What I want to do is find solutions. Teachers need special training to look for the red flags. There are always a myriad of flags with these children in distress. This child, obviously 18-year-old, this adult, had mental problems, and there were many different flags that went up, social media and so on. The schools were aware that this kid had problems, and it keeps getting passed along either to the next class, the next teacher, or the next school. We have to have some training for these teachers, and then it has to be passed on not only to the police, but to psychologists that can actually flag these things and make sure that, this, that these shooters, before they become shooters, get the, the help that they need, the medical help that they need, and then it, it, it proceeds from there that a professional doctor can say this person cannot apply for a gun and so on and so forth. So this proceeds we can put in place. You mentioned the shooter's past, Michael. What do we know about this shooter's past, the mental health history of this individual? Was this tragedy avoidable? Well, unfortunately, I think most of these tragedies are avoidable because these are very introverted individuals, right? So the shooter was very introverted. Uh, he did not get along with, uh, with his classmates. Uh, his grandmother would be the first to tell you if she was um, okay to speak that he didn't want to go to school. He didn't want to be around others. He was a gamer and other people in the game. So other probably children and adults that were in this violent game were saying they had they had cause for concern the way he was acting in this in the game the things they were overhearing over his headset while he was gaming so yes there were flags and in my opinion if someone would have stepped in if law enforcement or the school would have been involved to get this individual um, evaluated by a doctor or, or some type of psychologist then maybe this could have been prevented. But it's it's horrific. Michael, a lot of lawmakers this week asking for more security at schools, locking mechanisms on doors, et cetera. What can we do better to secure our nation's children at our public schools? That's an excellent question, Mike. And you know what? That's what's, what's you know ironic about that. It certainly isn't funny, but it is ironic. That that's the easiest thing we can do. That's, that's just basic protocols, um, it's security 101 that we should have those locking doors. And, and I, I know that that teacher probably, if that teacher is still alive, probably regrets propping that door open. Uh, maybe it was because there wasn't good ventilation. Who knows why? It really doesn't matter. The bottom line is that everyone in the school has to take these security procedures real. Uh, they have to take them seriously. And we can absolutely do a better job to make sure that we have proper security. And, and me, I'm personally, for one, it doesn't have to be a uniformed individual. But I think there should be an armed security person, a professionally trained person that is armed in every single school for just this situation. And if there was someone that was armed, maybe this person could have been stopped much sooner. I'm not saying they wouldn't have gotten off any rounds, but they certainly probably wouldn't have gotten off 100 rounds if you had someone with the, with the training and the experience to take them out before it happened. So I think we have to look at all of these security procedures, because in my opinion, that's the easiest thing to do. 
figuring out how to train teachers to look for these red flags and have psychologists and the police involved. All of those things are more difficult, but they can be done. And we have to do something. This pattern of violence has to stop against our children. Uh, you said it, Michael. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Michael Grimm, appreciate your time today. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.